Well, good to have you with us here on the Tuesday edition of the South African Morning. Well, I'm sure you'd agree our country is in crisis, but who exactly is to blame? Where do we start asking the right questions to, and how do we demand the right answers? Well, Corruption Watch has weighed in on this. Let's get the views now of Corruption Watch's uh, David Lewis. David, good morning to you. And what we've seen over the past uh, few days, we're going to call it an insurrection for the moment. I want to ask you about that miscommunication in government. But before we get to that, David, uh, David Lewis, let's just talk about the past few days. What we saw is nothing new. Uh, some are suggesting it was exacerbated because of COVID-19, but the socio-economic issues have been around for as long as you and I have been talking to each other. Oh, yeah, and, and, and longer than that. You know, the, the point is not so much how long they've been around for, but the fact that they haven't been fixed up because, you know, arguably they've been there through apartheid. Certainly they've been there through apartheid. And and in fact, they have worsened over the last uh, over the last ten ten years, ten fifteen years. So, so yes, you know, you know, I don't think those people who were who were out in the uh, looting and in the streets are there for this. Were there for their support of Zuma by and large? I think they were there because there was an opportunity to get. Uh, some food and some clothes and some uh, equipment that they could sell to buy food and clothes with. So, you know, the go go and government have been warned that this is a tinderbox for ages. I mean, yeah. we've warned them, countless other NGOs have warned them, the media has warned them. So you're right, this is nothing new, and he should have been taken of it. What does it look uh, like now, David, if they take heed of this now? I know the horse has bolted, if I can use uh, that cliche, yeah. but how do they try and heed the next warning, for example? Well, there are, there are short-term things that can be done. I mean, they can re reinstate some of the uh, um, relief measures that were instituted during the uh, first and second, first uh, uh, COVID uh, uh, a phase wave uh, those could be reinstated quite easily and then again you know for ages for as long as I can remember there's been this growing demand to talk about a basic income grant and again that's wholly possible it may well have to go with a wealth tax but you know if the wealthy don't recognize now that they are going to have to pay for some of the extraordinary uh, comforts that the wealthy in South Africa have. They're going to pay something for yeah. some of their wealth for the extraordinary comforts that the wealthy in South Africa have. Then I don't know when they'll recognize them, recognize that. So there are short, short to medium term measures that can be instituted. And then there are obviously also immediate relief measures, food parcels and the like that need to get out as soon as possible because people have lost work, uh, they, they, there's nowhere to buy food, uh, and all of these measures need to be introduced. Can we talk a little bit, I'd like your thoughts on this, David, this uh, seemingly miscommunication, misunderstanding, I'm not too sure what you'd like to call it, between the defense minister and the president of the country. The president of the country saying the facts do suggest that what we experienced last week and the days before that, uh, something of an insurrection. Uh, the defense minister suggesting there are no facts to suggest it was an insurrection. Uh, where do you land on this kind of miscommunication and mixed messaging? Most definitely with the president. I mean, I think the, uh, the minister of defense must be living in a different country or she must have her, hand, her head very firmly stuck in the sand. I mean, of course, you know, this is an insurrection. This is a, the, the, it's an attempted re, re, uh, insurrection. Uh, it hasn't succeeded, at least not yet. And I think it looks as though for the time being, I say holding thumbs that it's been seen off. But this was a quest for state power. By, by violent means, by extra legal and extra constitutional means. This wasn't a quest for fridges and stoves and food and, uh, and uh, uh, clothes by the instigators of this. The, the ones who lit the spark want to be reinstated uh, to their previous position in the state. They wanted their, to be, they wanted their access to state resources and state power restored and they wanted the existing government per force removed that by any definition is an attempt yeah, attempted yeah. insurrection 
And so I'm definitely on the president's uh, side in this, in this uh, dispute. I appreciate your time, David. It's always a pleasure speaking to you uh, and taking time in uh, joining us here on ENCA. David Lewis uh, from Corruption Watch, Executive Director of Corruption Watch. Let's take a